Hello and welcome to another standard game video. Today we're taking a look at a blue-eyed graveyard combo deck that can win the game as early as turn 4 by dealing infinite damage. It's a pretty simple combo once you get all the pieces in place and we need three different cards, two of which need to be in the graveyard and that also includes the new Arachdos joins up from Outlaws of Thunder Junction alongside Hulking Metamorph. And then all we need is four mana and Abuelo's Awakening in hand, can cast it for x equals zero, returning an artifact or non aura enchantment card from our graveyard to the battlefield, with additional counters if we paid for it, but we don't need those. And then it's a 1-1 spirit creature with flying in addition to its other types. So cast the Awakening, target Arachdos joins up. This is now a 1-1 spirit creature that's also a legendary enchantment. Enters the battlefield, returning target creature card from our graveyard to the battlefield with two additional plus one counters on it, and also sends whenever a legendary creature we control dies, Ragdos joins up deals damage equal to that creature's power to target opponent. So that final text here is what will actually win us the game. And then, so we now have a 1-1 Aractos joins up legendary enchantment creature on the battlefield, getting back Hulking Metamorph from the graveyard. And this is a very special clone effect in that it also modifies the creature's power and toughness when it enters. So a regular clone effect, if we now reanimate it, copying the 1-1 Aractos joins up enchantment creature, would turn it into just an enchantment that's not a creature. But because Hulking Metamorph specifically says we may have it enter the battlefield as a copy of an artifact or creature, except it's an artifact creature in addition to its other types and its power and toughness are equal to the metamorph's power and toughness we now end up with a 7-7 Arachdos joins up it is of course still legendary it also gets two plus one counters so it's actually a 9-9 creature the legendary rule will apply so we can only have one Arachdos joins up on the battlefield at the same time so we simply keep the original let the metamorph go back into the graveyard but because metamorph also came into play as Arachdos joins up it also gets to return a creature from our graveyard to the battlefield, so it once again selects itself again, rinse and repeat, and with every metamorph going to the graveyard, it will deal 18 damage, one from the original Arachdos joins up, and one from the metamorph Arachdos joins up, which also sees a 9-9 creature that's legendary end up in the graveyard. And then once we've dealt enough damage, once we have enough triggers on the stack, we can simply keep the metamorph instead of the Arachdos joins up, which will break the loop, and then we can let those triggers resolve to win the game. So yeah, that's how the combo works. It's pretty intricate and only works thanks to this very specific clone that also changes power and toughness. And uh, the rest of the deck, of course, includes lots of ways to mill additional cards into the graveyard, discard cards from our hand, so we can set up our graveyard nicely to eventually win the game. And uh, at one mana, that includes Otherworldly Gaze, can also be flashed back for one and a blue, so we can maybe uh, get value from it if it does get milled as well, which is also quite helpful. Then at two mana, we start with Founding the Third Path, which is a way to cast some of our instants and sorceries for free if we start from chapter one, which will especially combo nicely with a Picklock Prankster, so we can use the Adventure, milling four more cards, and then uh, finding an instant or sorcery among them, or another fairy to put in hand, so that can help us find the Abuelos Awakening, which is pretty important, of course, for the combo. And then founding on chapter two will mill four more cards and eventually can also exile an instant or sorcery to then cast it. So that can be a way to access Abuelo's Awakening if it does end up in the graveyard. So that is also quite helpful. And then the Archaeologist is similar to the Prankster, can also mill cards, finding any non-creature spells, so can even find enchantments like Ragdos joins up, although we'll eventually need to discard it as well, so sometimes we actually decline to grab Ragdos joins up and let it go to the graveyard instead, but of course another great way to fill our graveyard for us. And then Faithful Mending, if we end up with either Ragdos joins up or Hulking Metamorph in hand, we can cast or flash back to gain a bit of life, draw two and discard two, it's also very important for the deck to function and then to give us a little bit of interaction we also have two copies of temporary lockdown can be a great way to buy time against aggro decks can also maybe get rid of a deep cavern bat that maybe sniped one of our combo pieces and then i also have two copies of sunset revelry to gain a bit of life and uh, hopefully help us uh, get to turn four at least to set up the abuelo's awakening for the win and i can also maybe get it back with founding so it does have a bit of synergy there too and then the mana base, just lots of blue-eyed dual lands, also a fan of the Meticulous Archive, which can surveil when it enters, so that can also maybe help fill the graveyard for us, and then the channel lands can offer a bit more utility. So yeah, that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the draw. What do we think of our hand? We've got the Awakening, so we're just 
looking for our two author combo pieces to mill. And with Gaze and Prankster, we've got a decent shot at doing so. So I'll try it. Casting a card like Gaze early also helps empty our hand to set up Revelry to draw. Opponent on multicolor domain deck, it seems. Okay, so Archaeologist, I'm technically happy to keep. Do I need additional lands? I think we'll draw them naturally. So I don't mind taking a bit of damage off of our Wastes. And then we can start with Archaeologist. If that finds Founding or Saga, we can cast these other two mana spells for free. Ragdos joins up. I could take in hand since I can then discard it with Mending. And potentially saves it from graveyard hate. Not that I expect our opponent to have much. Alright, Virtue takes out Archaeologist, that's fine. This could also still be an Invasion of Alara build, which can go off if they hit Bramble Familiar. Possible that deck picked up some new tools as well. Alright, so for now. If I want to set up the combo for next turn, the only way to get there is probably with Faithful Mending, Discard Ragdos joins up, and Metamorph, which we would still have to draw into. I guess Prankster could also mill both pieces, but it's a bit less likely. Alright, so I'll uh, pass and then I'll likely go for Mending. Stomper for Ramp, so that pretty much excludes the Invasion of Alara build. So it's more your classic five-color domain. So the main instant speed interaction to worry about is Leyline Binding, which they're not keeping up here. All right, found Metamorph, and that should set up the kill. Opponents tapped out, so get back. Ragdos joins up, which in turn gets back Metamorph. Copies Ragdos joins up, and thanks to the ability, still turns into a 9-9 creature. Deal 18, get back Metamorph. And we only need to do this loop twice. And get back Archaeologist. Okay. Sweet. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and we've got Awakening, plenty of ways to mill, some ways to survive aggro, so I think I keep. Even though it might take us a while to find Metamorph and Rakdos facing red aggro. So, our hand's pretty well set up for the matchup at least. Can immediately cast Revelry and get the full effect. Always feels good. And then we're not in a hurry to cast Lockdown. Although, at the moment, I'm missing my third land drop. Alright, so definitely chumping this with Spear here. And then I can cast Founding, play Free Mending to try and hit our land drop for the turn. Metamorph we wanted to discard anyway. Perfect. And then another Mending can go, since we can always flash it back. Okay, so yeah, things are going well. Just need Rakdos to end up in the graveyard. But if it's on the bottom of our deck, then uh, we could still be in trouble. There's a show-off. Scary card. Although Lockdown will answer it nicely, so may as well chump. Perfect, Aragdos joins up, so I can mill myself. Just need to hit a fourth line drop now, but we should have plenty of time, still at 20. Our opponent's board just got a reset. And Mending can discard it next turn. Alright, perfect, so... 
Next turn we should have it, assuming our opponent doesn't keep up instant speed removal. But they don't really seem to be in a position to do so, because they're not applying a lot of pressure at the moment. But we'll see. Ancestral Anger. That's fine. Another one. So we just want to see them tap out here. And that's exactly what happens. Could also cast Awakening for X equals 1 if you were wondering. Doesn't really make a difference. And that should be game. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. What do we think of this hand without any combo pieces, but a decent amount of mill? Can start with Archive, and then cast Gaze on turn 3, perhaps, when we have more information. Yeah, I guess that's alright. Don't love it, but it's not a terrible hand either. Up against Red Black. Fourth land could still come in handy, and it's not like Archaeologist and Prankster will hit more of them, so I'll keep that one on top. Is their opponent not off to a super fast start? Definitely a decent hand to keep against someone who's planning for the late game. Start with Archaeologist, because if we hit Founding we can maybe play the Prankster for free. And I'm happy to see cut down here. Since that's the way they can potentially disrupt the combo. Can still grab the Ragdos joints up to later discard it to Faithful Mending. And there's a chance they have some Graveyard Hate at 3 mana. Thinking of Graveyard Trespasser. There's Lord Skitter as well. I see it's a Dragon's deck with Invasion of Tarkir. Alright, so Lockdown can answer the invasion, but probably won't hit too many of their dragons. But for now, I'll go for Archaeologists plus Gaze. And we hit Founding, so that can play the Prankster next turn. If we cast Gaze first, we can sort of set up the Archaeologist, but I'm just interested in digging as deep as possible, so... The sequencing makes a bit more sense, at least in this spot. So we're still waiting for the dragons to show up. Well, Devastator actually gets exiled by lockdown. So that might be the play next turn instead of uh, playing Founding. Although I guess if this transforms, it still counts as a two mana creature. So I would be able to exile it with lockdown after all. Okay, well, Metamorph can go to the graveyard, and then... It's kind of interesting here. If I put Archaeologist first and then Prankster, we draw Archaeologist, and then I can hit the Prankster with the other Prankster. I guess that's decent. Sure. And then I'll wait another turn on Lockdown. And just go Founding plus Archaeologist, most likely. And then I wouldn't mind casting the Mending for 2 mana as opposed to 3. Or we could keep the Revelry as more life gain. And then still go for Archaeologist here. And then we're just looking for the Awakening. Okay, so don't hate my position. They still need an extra damage to transform the invasion, so if they end up using a burn spell, that could also help us out. If they animate vents, we can double block, so that doesn't do it. Their hand could just be a bunch of removal. Or some more expensive dragons. 
Yep, Terror of the Peaks makes sense. Okay, so mill for four. We won't be able to combo this turn since we don't have the Awakening yet. And there's no copy in the graveyard either. Alright, so we're halfway through the deck, so we should be able to find it soon. And then for now, I can cast a lockdown. So that Terror of the Peaks doesn't trigger when the Thunder Maw enters. And then I can still cast Mending. That seems acceptable. Could also attack with the Archaeologists just to have them end up in the graveyard if they block with terror. Don't know if that really matters, but you never know. Opponent takes it anyway. Okay. Pass a turn. And hope our opponent doesn't have Calamity at 6 mana, because that's a combo with terror that can instantly win the game, basically. But this strikes me more like a Dragon's deck if they're running Invasion. Goth. I guess this is technically a mountain. Okay. Just hoping they tap out so we don't need to worry about instant speed interaction to mess up our combo. There's the Awakening, so we can go for it next turn. And another one as backup. I guess we could cast this for uh, X equals 2 to play around Cutdown specifically. Get back Metamorph. And that should be it. Awesome. So yeah, against more mid-range decks, you usually have a little bit more time to set up, and then it doesn't matter if they have a powerful late game when you can just win on the spot. And that'll do it. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, and we've got triple founding. One of them's going to be very useful at casting mending, discard Rakdos, and then we'll take it from there. These also represent mill 12 combined, so they get to dig pretty deep. And that resolves. Could be playing a mirror match. Nothing from the opponents, so it makes that less likely. So it might just be blue-white control or blue-white artifacts. Okay. Is there any use for the power stone? I don't think so in our deck. Okay, milled the Awakening. So in that case, maybe start founding from Chapter 1, so this one can eventually get back the Awakening. Because if I start this one from Chapter 2, we've got the same problem. And then I can cast a free Gaze for what it's worth. Alright, so... Yeah, next turn I'm gonna mill for 4 after my draw step. So I could keep Prankster, and then don't need the lands really. The Power Stone does not help in flashing back our instant. And Braided Nuts is next. Don't think that interferes too much with us. And then I don't want to exile the Awakening. Can select maybe a Faithful Mending or a Revelry. Probably wouldn't be casting that one. And we milled Metamorph. So yeah, next turn we can replay Awakening and potentially go for it. So in the meantime, 
probably start with founding, cast a free prankster, and then I can still flash back something out of the graveyard. Now our opponent could have some counter spells in hand, of course. But founding can maybe help cast multiple awakenings over time. Okay. And then I'll flash back gaze, I suppose. Over playing prankster. Celestus is next. Our opponent is diligently keeping up some mana here, it seems. And then I think I just want to draw the Awakening. But here we can use Founding. And yeah, see if we can just win here. But I doubt it. Okay, that resolves. Get back Metamorph. Do we see removal on the Rakdos joins up? We do, Soul Partition. Okay, in that case, I guess we copy the Power Stone. Still a 9-9 creature. And next turn, we should still be able to go for it, since we have another Rakdos joins up ready to be reanimated. So hopefully they tap out. I guess Braided Net can keep our Power Stone in check. So this is attempt number two. And I've got another Awakening in hand. And another Soul Partition. Well, guess we're making another 9-9 Power Stone. So now with both of these in exile, I will need to mill another Rakdos joins up before we can uh, combo off again. And yeah, the Synthesizers can certainly compete with our 9-9 creatures. Aegis can exile my Power Stone. Opponent is now tapped out, but as we said, we need another Ragdos joins up in the graveyard. So, yeah, we're probably dead next turn, because Braid and Nut can tap down our Power Stone. The only way to stop this is if we find a Lockdown, if we haven't milled both copies yet. So that can maybe save us, or if we find Revelry, but we've already exiled one of them. Did I mill the other? I did not. So what's the best chance of finding one of those cards? I guess, um... Just drawing into them naturally, because if I cast Gaze, I don't have the mana to cast Lockdown. I guess never mind, we have a Lockdown in hand, what am I talking about? Okay, so we'll just take our draw step then. Find another lockdown anyway. Okay, so we can... I guess just cast a lockdown here. Can maybe force them to use braided nets, but I doubt it. Alright, opponent also anyway. So lockdown will deal with all the tokens, including my own. So that at least buys us some more time. Yeah, this is never getting cast. So Soul Partition's actually a perfect answer to the combo here. Also don't have a Metamorph in the graveyard anymore, so I'll have to discard the current one. And our opponent's able to make more Constructs here. So those are also threatening lethal. I'll take my draw step. Find another awakening. So I think now the plan is maybe flashback mending, hope to hit a land, and then I can still play Prankster as a chum blocker. Or I can just cast Lockdown. Hmm. 
yeah, maybe I should just lock down. Problem is, every artifact they cast, they can easily just uh, generate two more of these constructs. So, not sure if I can really survive this onslaught turn after turn, so I need to kind of progress my own game plan. So, I think that involves flashback mending, cast prankster, hope to chump for a turn, and then next turn maybe lock down again. Did find Rakdos joins up, but did not find the land. So if they can make any artifacts, we're dead. Unfortunately. Because we are up to 16, but it just takes one artifact to grow these. Well, looks like we're maybe in the clear. Although that does imply that our opponent has more interaction in hand to keep them alive. So what does that mean for me? Like an Awakening again, they might have another Soul Partition. If I end up with a Metamorph, I guess we don't even have a Power Stone to copy this time, so that's no good. If I go for Lockdown, then Soul Partition's not good enough. Or is it... I guess they can just cast it in response to the trigger, and then the creatures never get exiled, since it's uh, one trigger as opposed to two separate triggers. So yeah, we're dead to Soul Partition regardless, so I may as well go for the win. And if they can stop it a third time, there's uh, not much we could do about it. Alright, Soul Partition number three. Good game. And synthesizer, not really necessary here. Better opponent showing off what they're capable of. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Got double Rakdos in hand. So we're still missing a few pieces. And then Archaeologist and Prankster to set it up. This one's kind of borderline, just because we need two combo pieces and we don't really have any interaction on the draw. We might need Revelry or Lockdown. So, I'll take Mulligan. This is a little bit better. Since we can Founding cast a free Prankster, which gets us going. And then we might end up channeling Iganjo. Facing a red aggro. Okay. So I can hang on to Iganjo for the time being. Opponent off to a great start. But we do have the lockdown next turn at least. Still happy to cast Founding. And wow, we milled all the combo pieces, so we just need to get up to 4 mana. Next turn lockdown, yeah, we should be able to survive. Unless our opponent deals 16 here. Or close to 16 and then enough next turn. But yeah, it's just gonna be a code breaker. So that was lucky. Can mill 4 more, but don't really need it. This is a good illustration of why we still need cards like Lockdown and Revelry, because the aggro decks can certainly kill us before we can combo off, even if we mill all the pieces right away. Our opponent plotting a show-off here, but it's our time to show off. And there we have it. And we can easily break the loop if there's no other creature in the graveyard by selecting the Metamorph onto the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and our hands, not amazing, but we do have double lockdown, so we're 
okay against aggro. And then, uh, yeah, we can cast Gaze, eventually flash it back. Sadly, can't play it on turn one. But eventually we can discard Haragdos joins up. Facing black green, Cottage can also exile cards from our graveyard, so we'll have to be a little careful. And then Milling Gaze is probably fine. I'll keep one land on top. Three mana. Time for Dread Knight. Lockdown's a fine answer to it. Although I'm not in a hurry to cast it here. Okay, so don't need another lockdown. Founding doesn't cast anything for free. But I could potentially keep it on top just to hit it with the Archaeologist. And then I can cast it afterwards as well. And then ideally mill the Hulking Metamorph. And I can start from chapter 2 here. Opponent seems to have a cut down in hand since they're holding priority. So if we mill Metamorph we could combo off next turn and there it is. So now I just need my opponent to tap out. If they have Deep Cavern Bat to take away the Awakening, then I guess we don't have one in the graveyard to cast with Founding. Otherwise, there could have been a solution. So if they play a Bat, I have to lock down first. And then Cottage could become a problem. If they keep up instant speed removal, they can try and mess up my combo. Glissa, that's fine. But they could still have another cut down in hand for all we know. Alright, we get a couple attempts at it. This is mandatory, I have to exile a card from my graveyard even if I don't want to cast it. And then we'll see if we can just win here. Get back, Aragdos joins up. Hope they can't cut down. Get back, Metamorph. Keep the 1-1. One -one. Deal 18. Get back, Metamorph. And there we have it. And then I'll select something else, so we can end the loop. Well, not bad. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Our hand's a little clunky with two archives. Hopefully we'll find an untapped land on turn two. And then our hand's not bad. We already have Awakening, Metamorph. So we're most of the way there. And Gaze is not quite going to cut it here. Also good to mill regardless. Alright, so we'll have to skip our 2-drop for now. But keep a third land on top. Opponent mono black so far. Preacher's next. Okay, so start with Founding. Cast a free Prankster. And hope her opponent's not packing Graveyard Hate. Because that's always going to be a weakness for a strategy like this. I can grab Gaze, which I can cast for one mana. Even though we'll eventually need to flash back Mending to put Metamorph in there. I think that makes sense. Just uh, cast as many mill spells as possible to dig for Ragdos. Opponent gets to trigger both modes on Preacher, when both at 20. And we could see a Shieldred next. Unless her opponent's worried about sweepers, perhaps. Okay, so another founding wouldn't be bad to keep. I also need a fourth land, a revelry. So there's a lot of cards that we wouldn't mind here. Opponent has six cards in hand, so revelry would kind of do it all here. Yeah, I would have to lose a life to a darker waste to also gain the life, but don't care about that as much. So yeah, maybe keep revelry, draw into wastes, and then... Maybe Founding is not really necessary, since we don't have any spells to play for free. Sure. 
And then I have to mill the opponent if I want to draw the land. Maybe there was a reason to still uh, get rid of the land after all. But uh, I do need a fourth land, so let's just play it safe, mill the opponent for now. Might also give us a bit more info on what the opponent's trying. I see Dream Thief, well, and Lord Skitters, so they have Graveyard Hate. Good to know. So we'll cast a Revelry. And then Archaeologist. Opponent had a cut down. Good to flush that out. And now they get to use a Dream Thief, thanks to our help. Okay, so... Hope they don't have Lord Skitter here. And then we're looking for Ragdos joins up. Skull Dweller's fine. Next turn I could potentially cast another Ravelry. But uh, I think I prefer just going for Archaeologist and maybe flashback something or cast a Mending from hand. Alright, opponent's taking out my 1 1. Attacks. Can trade. So yeah, opponent's got four cards in hand, so Revelry would not draw me a card. Now I'm forced to exile a card regardless, so maybe I do cast a one mana Gaze here. Or maybe a two mana Mending, which can discard another Mending as well. Sure. Saves me a mana on the flashback. And then Ragdos joins up, is what we want, and we got it. Now I guess we could keep those in hand to play around Graveyard Hate, and then for now just discard, let's say, Archaeologists, and I guess I would have to discard a land. That's fine. And then I can Mending at instant speed in their end step, discarding both Ragdos joins up and Metamorph. We have Double Awakening in case they can take one away with a Deep Cavern Bat. And that should set up the win next turn, even through a Graveyard Hate. Opponent animates Foundry. Now they likely still have some removal in hand. So that could mess up the combo. Plenty of Ragdoses to work with now. And if this fails, we can maybe try again next turn with another Awakening. Alright, so far so good. That's 18 damage on the stack. Get back Metamorph. And that should be game. Awesome. So beating black mid-range here as well. And yeah, proving that our deck can potentially beat Graveyard Hate as long as it's sorcery speed in the form of Skitter and uh, Trespasser. Awesome. Alright, so we got to see our Awakening combo deck in action, and I've got to say I'm quite impressed. The combo seems pretty easy to assemble, just three cards, two of which can be in the graveyard. We even have the added redundancy of maybe replaying Awakening out of the graveyard using our Founding of the Third Path. And then the combo is also very arena friendly, in the sense that we don't need to do a whole lot of clicking, it's not an infinite loop that's kind of tedious, like some other combos can be. So it only takes a handful of uh, actions to win the game and deal a lot of damage out of nowhere. So I can definitely recommend the deck if you like this sort of playstyle. Seems to hold up against the aggro decks as well. That's of course where Lockdown and Revelry will come in handy. But with all the mill effects and additional card draw, we've got access to those effects more often than you might think, just because we get to see so many cards. So yeah, that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day.